Hello and welcome everyone. Apexification and apexogenesis are two procedures that can help to save an underdeveloped tooth with a pulpal exposure from getting extracted. Because when a tooth erupts in the oral cavity, its root aren't fully developed yet and it takes about 2 to 3 years for the root to fully develop. So at this stage, the tooth has an underdeveloped thin root with a wide apex that is known as an open apex. And if this developing tooth gets a pulpal exposure, then this open apex can provide a serious challenge in the treatment of the tooth. Because this tooth with a wide open apex cannot be treated with just conventional treatment procedure. For example, root canal treatment cannot be done on these undeveloped teeth. Because apical seal, which is very crucial for the success of any root canal treatment, cannot be achieved in these teeth with open apices. Hence, conventional treatment plans are not applicable in these open apex cases. Apexification and apexogenesis are two procedures that have been advised to overcome this problem and save this underdeveloped tooth from getting extracted. And in this video, I will be discussing both of these procedures side by side. Apexogenesis in the 10th edition of Glossary of Endodontics is defined as a vital pulp therapy procedure performed to encourage continued physiological development and formation of the root end. Apexification on the other hand in the 10th edition of Glossary of Endodontics is defined as a method to induce a calcified barrier in a root with an open apex or continued apical development of an incompletely formed root in teeth with necrotic pulps. So in simple words, apexogenesis is a vital pulp therapy procedure, meaning that the vitality of the pulp is left intact. In fact, the goal of apexogenesis is to maintain the vitality of the pulp, while in apexification, the vitality of the pulp is lost. So the main objective of apexogenesis is to maintain the vitality of the pulp after a pulpal exposure has occurred, usually due to trauma or some kind of mechanical exposure, so that the root can continue developing and the apical closure can be achieved. While in apexification, a calcified barrier is created at the root end in order to have an artificial root end closure so that an apical seal can be achieved and so the pulp is removed and hence the vitality of the pulp is lost in apexification. If you are worried about when to perform apexogenesis and apexification, I will be discussing that in detail in the case selection later part of this video, so don't worry about that for now. Just try to understand the basic concept. So moving on, in apexogenesis, not the entire pulp is removed, rather only the coronal pulp is removed. This removal of only the coronal pulp is known as pulpotomy. And depending upon how much of the coronal pulp is removed, there may be two types of pulpotomy. If the exposure of the pulp is small and short-lived, then only the more superficial diseased coronal pulp can be removed in a procedure known as Civex pulpotomy. In Civex pulpotomy, or also known as partial pulpotomy, only the superficial 2 to 4 mm of the pulp is removed, while the rest of the coronal as well as the reticular pulp is spared. When there is a larger exposure, or if the pulp was exposed for a very long time, then conventional pulpotomy can be done, in which the entire coronal pulp is removed at the level of apical constriction, and only the reticular pulp is spared. Research has demonstrated that Civex pulpotomy has a better success rate for keeping the pulp vital later onwards and for continued root development of the tooth as compared to the conventional pulpotomy since more of the pulp is left in Civex pulpotomy. In apexification, however, the entire necrotic pulp is removed and this removal of the entire pulp is known as pulpectomy. The removal of the pulp is done with gentle circumferential filing along with irrigation with 1.25% sodium hypochloride. The objective over here is to maximize cleaning by disrupting the biofilms on the canal walls along with irrigation and minimal dentinal removal. But in apexification, the entire pulp has to be removed because it is necrotic or will eventually undergo necrosis and therefore is unable to sustain the continued growth of the tooth. Now what is the material used in apexogenesis and apexification? Mineral trioxide or also known as MTA is now becoming the most prominently and the most widely used material for both apexogenesis and apexification. MTA is currently replacing the once famous calcium hydroxide. Although calcium hydroxide was once very widely used due to certain disadvantages, it is now being replaced by MTA. I will talk more about the differences between MTA and calcium hydroxide in a separate video. So after the initial stages of the procedures, the MTA is introduced in the pulpal space. 
Since MTA sets in the presence of moisture, a moist cotton pellet is placed in the canal or the chamber and a well sealed temporary restoration is placed. The patient is recalled when the MTA has set, that is at least after 24 hours. And if the MTA is set, then in the case of apexogenesis, a final restoration is directly placed. Whereas in the case of apexification, obturation is completed and the final restoration is then placed. Now, What is an ideal case for apexogenesis or apexification? So first let's discuss apexogenesis. Case selection increases the chances of success of apexogenesis. A tooth having an open apex which was symptomless before or had mild signs and symptoms of reversible pulpitis before the exposure had occurred is the ideal tooth that should be treated with apexogenesis. Because the pulp in reversible pulpitis can be reversed back to its normal state if the cause of inflammation is removed. Hence, it is still healthy and is still capable of sustaining continued development and growth of the tooth. But if the tooth prior to exposure had symptoms of irreversible pulpitis such as spontaneous and lingering pain which are the classical symptoms of irreversible pulpitis then attempting apexogenesis is useless since the pulp will eventually go into the necrotic state regardless of whether the irritants are removed or not. That is the reason why it is known as irreversible pulpitis because the condition of the pulp is now essentially irreversible. Meaning it cannot be reversed back to a normal healthy pulp it will eventually go into a necrotic state. Same also goes for a tooth already having a necrotic pulp. So in these type of teeth, there is no healthy pulp present that can continue the root development. For this reason, apexification rather than apexogenesis is the recommended treatment option to save these teeth from getting extracted. So just to summarize this short story on case selection, a tooth which was healthy and symptomless prior to pulpal exposure or had mild symptoms of reversible pulpitis is the ideal case for apexogenesis. While a tooth having a necrotic pulp prior to exposure or having symptoms of irreversible pulpitis should be treated with apexification. One thing I would like to add over here is that it is recommended that any kind of pulpal exposure ideally should be treated as early as possible. A small exposure can be treated with direct pulp capping in which MTA is directly placed over the small exposed part hence avoiding the need for any kind of pulp removal and apexogenesis. But of course there are certain conditions to perform direct pulp capping as well. More on direct pulp capping in later videos. Now what are the outcomes of apexogenesis and apexification? The ideal outcome of apexogenesis therapy is continued apical growth of the root while maintaining the pulp vitality, therefore allowing dentine formation and root and closure. The pulp may remain vital for indefinite periods of time. By keeping the pulp alive, the remaining odontoblast can continue depositing dentine, increasing the thickness of root dentinal walls and making it less prone to fracture. As mentioned previously, apexogenesis has a better success rate with partial pulpotomy or cervix pulpotomy since more of the healthy pulp is left in the tooth. On the other hand, in the case of apexification, the pulp is no longer vital, so there will not be any kind of continued root development. Hence, the tooth will have weak roots with thin dentinal walls and therefore more prone to fracture later on during the masticatory life of the tooth. Therefore, the final restoration after apexification is very crucial and it should be made very tough and resilient and it should be capable of resisting the high mastricatory loads during the life of the tooth. In the end, let's briefly discuss the possible failures or the causes of failures of apexogenesis and apexification. As mentioned, cervix pulpotomy has a better success rate, but after a conventional pulpotomy in which almost the entire coronal pulp is removed, the success rate of apexogenesis is low and calcific metamorphosis is a common occurrence. Calcific metamorphosis is the filling of the pulpal space with hard tissue formation, but according to most views, even after calcific metamorphosis, root canal treatment is not recommended since calcific metamorphosis itself is not a pathological condition. However, if the pulp becomes necrotic in the future and the canal becomes non-negotiable, then surgery would be necessary. Failure of apexification will usually result in an infection being developed. The most common cause of failure of apexification is by bacterial contamination. 
Bacterial contamination can be caused by the loss of coronal restoration through which the bacteria can gain access or inadequate development of the canal during the treatment. Hence, just like a root canal treatment, aseptic environment and establishment of the apical and coronal seals are one of the most crucial parts for the long-term success of apexification. Another cause of failure of apexification are root fractures. As mentioned, the root of the tooth is not fully developed yet and the tooth is not reinforced enough to be able to withstand the intense masticatory loads. Hence, the final restorations should be made very strong and capable of resisting high masticatory loads during the life of the tooth. If you found today's video helpful, so do consider subscribing to my channel. I am trying to hit 20,000 subscribers by the end of 2023. So subscribing to the channel will really help me out. And if you want more study materials, you can always visit my Patreon page where you can find practice questions, study notes and quizzes on various topics including today's lecture. I also occasionally share behind the scenes stuff on my Patreon. So if you find my content helpful, do consider supporting me and becoming a Patreon on patreon.com slash study with the dentist. As always, take care of yourselves and your loved ones. Stay safe and goodbye.